can gather it together in the presence of God. We are going to listen the word of God. Hallelujah. And may God bless every one of us. And I greet you all in the master's name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ this morning for this service. And uh, I, I, I pray that let everyone be blessed by the word of God today. And I'm so glad to uh, introduce our guest speaker uh, uh, of today, uh, Pastor P.U. Benny uh, from Mumbai. And uh, uh, he is, I mean, uh, he is with us uh, to share the word of God with us this morning. And uh, he's a senior pastor of uh, uh, Indian Pentecostal Church of God. And at present, he is uh, 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 ministering. He and his family is ministering in IPC uh, uh, Chimbur Church, Mumbai. So, uh, moreover, his uh, I mean, wife, he, uh, wife Jaya, is my uh, cousin sister. So, uh, he is my brother-in-law. So, we, we are so glad that you are with us this morning uh, to share the word of God. He has been used by God uh, for the glory of God for past many years and in different places, even in Gulf countries and in, and in India also. So, uh, and we are so excited to uh, hear from the man of God today. And uh, let us all sit in the presence of God uh, with a prayerful attitude so that uh, God may speak to every one person this morning uh, to have that, uh, I mean, encouragement from the word of God. Amen. So shall we all, I mean, put our hands together and welcome Pastor Benny Pio uh, this morning in our midst. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Am I audible? Am I audible? Yes, yes. It's so privileged for me to come and share God's word with you. Uh, this is the second time I am visiting U.S. sitting at Mumbai uh, in my church building. Uh, I've been sharing God's word a few months before in a church in New York. And this time I'm in California and I don't know what is the city next. Anyway, it's something uh, uh, very, uh, very unusual thing that you no know, we never thought that we will have such situations in our life uh, so uh, whatever may be the situation the lord has allowed it so we are in a situation where god is teaching us new lessons and god is teaching us to you know uh, just to understand the new situations in our life this morning uh, i'm so glad to join with you all there in California uh, through this medium called Zoom. And I'm so happy to see uh, my beloved uh, brother-in-law and my friend, uh, Pastor Samkuti and uh, his family. Uh, we met uh, last time when they came for the interview for their US uh, travel. That's the last time we met. And this is again, uh, God gave an opportunity to meet at least through the platform of Zoom. And also I extend uh, my greetings to all of you there in the church. And uh, though I'm a bit embarrassed or nervous, nervous because <laughs> I don't know how far I'm able to communicate because uh, most of you are born and brought up there and uh, the structure of the sentence and the accent that you use is not that uh, familiar to me, but uh, for my everyday use, uh, I use Malayalam for my preaching all the most, and uh, seldom I use English uh, now and then. Therefore, I may not be able to be the app person uh, for her to share God's word in English, but as you have your church in English, I will try my best to communicate what God has put in my heart and I request your prayers and bear with me if there is something that you are not able to understand. And of course, you have the freedom to raise your hand if you need more clarity for what, what I'm trying to convey to you. So it's, I consider this as a privilege and I request the person who is hosting this meeting to please allow me for the screen sharing. I have some... Uh, PowerPoint uh, as, as points, bullet points of my message. So that can be visible to you. So I request uh, who is hosting the meeting, please allow me for the screen sharing. Once again, I extend my greetings to all of you, especially to Pastor Sankuti and his family and all the church members, youngsters and elderly people in the church, the, uh, the committee or the council who are whatever uh, people who are controlling or 
taking the leadership of the church. Thank you for inviting me to share God's word with you. May God uh, bless you through the message that I'm going to share, which God has put in my heart. Uh, today, uh, I really want to share something which is uh, very uh, familiar. It is, it is nothing new to you. This is something very familiar. The topic, uh, it's already there on the screen. Is it visible there? Okay. So the title goes like this. Be ready for the twist. God's higher plans in gentle whisper. This is the title. Uh, this is the theme that I'm going to share with. And uh, the theme is coming out of First King chapter 19 verses from 9 to 13. First King chapter 19 verse 9 to 13. This is a very familiar passage. Uh, it is talking about Elijah. I'm sure that there won't be anyone who never heard about Elijah in a, in, in a preaching, either in a preaching or in a Sunday school lesson. We've been, or we might have heard many times about the story, about the ministry of Elijah, uh, his prophetic ministry or his uh, disappointment in the prophetic ministry. So you might have heard uh, the ministry and the life of Elijah from different perspective, from different anchor, as according to the man of God uh, from whom you heard the message. So this morning, I'm going to share something about the life of Elijah as God has put in my heart. When I was meditating on the life and the ministry of Elijah, especially from this particular portion from chapter 19, verse 9 to 13, where we read uh, where God met Elijah in the Mount Horeb. Now, that is the place where he was hiding in a cave, uh, no, fled from the Lord, uh, running away from the Lord, he was disappointed with the Lord. He was discouraged in life. So he was so, uh, in a sense, uh, backslidden uh, or he was so disappointed. So in that situation, when he was just hiding in a cave in Mount of Horeb, uh, that mountain is also known as Mount Sinai, where Moses received the commandment from the Lord. Or that is the mountain where he was hiding himself. Or that is a place where he went away from the Lord. So we know the story or the ministry of Elijah. We know how he started his ministry. That is recorded in chapter 17 verse 1. He started as a mighty prophet. Stood before King Ahab and telling that, no, until otherwise I said, there won't be any rains in the following years. With that assurance, with that boldness, he conveyed the, the message, the prophetic message to the king of Israel. And we know what, what the events followed after that. Then the Lord said, no, then Lord protected him. We know. And after three and a half years, Elijah came back to the Mount Carmel. And we know what was the climax of it. So I will just put this way, you now in between these two verses, that is chapter 17, one, we see the commencement of his ministry in relation to king of Israel. And then we see the climax on Mount Carmel that is recorded in chapter 18, verse 40. So after the event or the victory of Carmel took an unpleasant twist, he was expecting a conclusion. He was expecting something 
as a conclusion of the climax of Carmel. But unfortunately, or fortunately, humanly speaking, that was an unfortunate event. But divinely speaking, that was the plan of God. So things didn't turn according to he expected. All his expectation did not come true. So after the victory in Carmel, he came to a, a valley of disappointment. What was the disappointment? It is recorded in chapter 19, verse 2. There was a threat from Jezebel. Jezebel, what she said, you will be like one of my prophet by tomorrow morning. He waited for the Carmel. He waited for that day of God's victory. He waited. He sacrificed a lot suffering in, in the brook of Cherith and then staying in a hiding place in Sarifat. And he suffered a lot. He is expressing it even in chapter 19 in the portion we, we, we suggested for our meditation. There also he is complaining. I was so zealous about the Lord. But I just came to this kind of a disappointment. So when Jezebel threatened him that your life will be like one of the prophets, one of my prophets by tomorrow this time. So he was so disappointed. He was so disappointed because you no, know, he suffered all these years in loneliness. He suffered all these years in hiding. He suffered all these years only for one purpose that the name of the Lord must be lifted through his ministry. God Yahweh should be lifted in the life of Israel. All the worship of Baal, all the worship of Asherah should be destroyed once for all. That was the expectation. That was his dream. But even after the Carmel climax, even after the great victory on the Mount Carmel, the story took an unpleasant twist. That was something disappointing to him. So he, what he did, he ran to Beersheba in a Judean desert. He wanted to die. He said, even in, in, in chapter 19, he is expressing his desire. He's telling, I'm disappointed. I'm not better than any of my ancestors. I'm not better than any of my fathers. Therefore, Lord, I don't want to leave. I really want to die. That was his prayer. That was his demand. So what, what, what is the situation that led Elijah to come to that kind of a decision running to Beersheba in Judean desert? Now when we discuss, when we meditate on this portion, we will discover what was the problem that Elijah couldn't hear the voice of God in a, such a disappointing time. No, this is a situation where we all go through. We are desiring some sort of voice from the Lord. When we all go through a situation called a pandemic, a COVID situation where our life is hanging on uncertainties, we do not know what is next. We do not know. Similar to a situation, our life is taking an unpleasant twist. We do not know what is next. We had our dreams. We had our expectations. We were waiting for many things. We had plans and we had our dreams and things like that. We had a lot of plans. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, there is something that happened. It's an unpleasant twist. We do not know what is next. It's not the story of one country. It's not the story of one family. It's not the story of one, one group of people. It's the same story for all the people around the globe. And people are so uncertain. People who have invested millions of dollars are so worried. 
what would be their, their, their income? What would be their investment? People who are in beautiful job, they are, they are hanging in uncertainty, thinking, what would be my situation tomorrow? In these uncertain days, we all are expecting a voice from the Lord. But sometimes, God, instead of giving the answer that we expect for, instead, the, the answer that we were seeking for, our life is taking an unexpected twist. In such situation, what will be our response? What would be our response? What, what went wrong with Elijah? Where he was wrong? You just, just, just come with me. We will meditate on that portion. What was, why Elijah couldn't hear the voice in this critical juncture of his life? He was a man who received the prophecy. He was a man who could listen from the Lord. He was moving and living his life according to the command of God. But when this unexpected twist happened in the Carmel mountain, after killing all the prophets, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, he was so disappointed. And I meditated on the portion that God began to speak to me where he went wrong. Number one, let's move on. No, was he not in danger ever before? Yes, he was in danger. Many times when he made his first prophecy to Ahab, his life was under danger. No, this is not Jezebel who is challenging his life for the first time. His life was under threat even before. When he started his ministry, when he made his first prophecy against the people of Israel, against King Ahab, his life was under threat. So how he escaped? He simply escaped. After pronouncing the prophecy to Ahab, God said, that is what we read in, Gen in, in 1 King chapter 17, verse 3. God told him to go to Kerith. God kept him there. God fed him there. God gave him protection. Nobody could touch him. No, to understand that we should study where the brook is. The brook is in Samaria itself. The brook is just under the nose of King Ahab. It is not far a country. It is not a far a place. It is somewhere near. When Ahab is seeking to kill Elijah and he is you know, sending all his army, his soldiers all around the country to the neighboring country. He was seeking to kill prophet Elijah. But even in that time when Elijah went according to the according to the commandment of God, according to the order of God, he was protected under the nose of King Ahab there in the brook Cherith. Was he not protected? Yes, he was protected. Was this the first time that he, his life was under threat? No, not at all. No, no, he, his life was under threat many times. If we move on to chapter 17, verse 8, God commanded him. When grew, brook Cherith dried up, God commanded Elijah, now you go to Sarephath. I have ordered, I have ordered a widow there in, in Sarephath to provide meals for you, to provide food for you, and also to protect you, to give you a hiding place. Nobody is going to come and take your life. Where is Sarephath? Sarephath is a place from where Jezebel is coming. If God can protect you under the, under the custody of the enemy's land, if God can protect you in Zarephah, if God can protect you in Brook Cherith, if God can protect you in every place, why are you so disappointed when Jezebel is challenging your life? If God had protected you previous in the previous years, 
if god had given you directions when you had challenges in your life why are you not why are you not seeking the face of the lord now no even elijah returned to meet or to present himself to ahab according to the commandment of god we see in these two three incidents elijah was well protected under the directions of god is that god still alive let's move on why elijah failed to hear the voice number 1 in this particular time of disappointment when jezebel threatened his life he could have waited as early he could have waited on the lord asking the lord lord where should i go if you can protect me in cherith if you can protect me in sarefa if you can protect me on mount carmel if you can stand with me lord what should i do next instead of asking the lord who protected him in all these past years when his life was under threat but when he got a new threat from this woman called jezebel instead of waiting on the lord to get the direction he himself decided he himself de decided you see that you see the change you see the change in the attitude many times god is willing to speak god is willing to speak what's a problem was it problem with elijah or with god was god unwilling to reveal his plan was god unwilling to give him a place of protection was god unwilling to give him a direction no god was willing it was elijah who was not willing to listen instead of waiting on the lord instead of asking the lord lord where should i go where should i go what should i do he is himself decided the reason i have explained in the introduction itself he had a frame he had an expectation just immediately after mount carmel he was expecting a conclusion he had a conclusion is in his mind when god made a twist no you know we all read uh, beautiful novels and some of you may be uh, uh, viewing some of uh, good uh, movies normally i don't see much movie but uh, i think in a, in an american situation i know some of your youngsters are just uh, fond of good english movies or uh, those who are from north and all you may be fond of hindi movies no just i'm why i'm taking that example you see in either in a movie or in a novel you see no we are reading a portion and we are reading a chapter we are reading an incident or we are looking at an incident and you see immediately we may be expecting that either villain or this person no he is going to do this but the author skillfully he twist he twisted and he take us to an unexpected field we never thought that the story is going to take an unexpected turn we all expected that this is going to be a tragedy we all expected this is going to be a comedy we all expected this is going to happen next but all of a sudden the skillful author is taking the story to a new turn and opening up a new chapter same way elijah had a dream elijah had a conclusion elijah had a plan elijah had a purpose but when god twisted it elijah was disappointed friends i really want to pass a message to you sometimes we all have our plans in our life we all have our date fixed we all have our plan fixed either in the ministry or in the job in the family life we all have our plans fixed but when that plan is not happening it is normal it's quite normal 
that we all get disappointed. But always understand, he is the master. We are the servants. We are not supposed to bring the plot to an end. If the author is skillful enough, let him take number of twists. Let his plot, the plot of the story, may take any number of twists. That is the right of the author. It is a right of the person who is controlling the drama. He is the one who is writing the story and he has complete freedom to bring the story to his desired end. He is not bound by to conclude the stories to our end. Many times where we go wrong, we want the story to come to our end. We want the writer, we want the author, we want the master to come to our end. That was the problem with Elijah. But if you are simply waiting and willing, Lord, I don't know the plot of the story. I don't know the drama that you are going to play. I don't know the, the twist that you are going to take, but I'm going to accept the twist. If Jezebel is challenging my life, I'm not here to argue. I'm not here to argue with the Lord. Simply wait and ask the Lord, what should I do? If Elijah would have asked that simple question on the Mount Carmel, he would not have been discouraged and disappointed this much in his life. What did he do? He ran to worship. He ran to Judean desert, disappointed, loving to die. So God was not unwilling to speak. It was an Elijah who was unwilling to listen. Many times it is not fault with God. Many times our disappointment is not from God's reason. The disappointment is that we are not willing to listen. So in the case of Elijah, why Elijah failed to hear the voice of God that he heard in chapter 19, verse 9 to 13. What was the second problem? That was his misunderstanding and his misconception or his misrepresentation. Number one is misunderstanding or his misrepresentation. What was the problem with Elijah? No, he thought, I am the only one left. Well, already I said, Elijah always thought to bring his conclusion to the story because he is the man, he is the prophet, he is the only one man left according to his understanding, his understanding that he is the only man. He is the only man for Jehovah. He is the only prophet for Jehovah. He is the only man who stood in the trial. He is the only man who stood against Jezebel. He is the only man who stood against Ahab. He is the only man who stood against the prophets of Baal. That was he thought. But that was not the story. Now, when we come to that in the, in, in the later portion, we will see there were 7,000 people left in Israel who never bowed before Baal. He misunderstood. Now, sometimes when we do things, we, we think that we are the center of everything. Everything is revolving around our, our life. No. Never, 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 don't, don't, don't have a misrepresentation. He thought that he is a representative of God all alone in Israel. But God said, no, I can continue my work. Even if you conclude your ministry, even if your life is over, I am able enough to continue my ministry. I have 7,000 of them left in my hands whom I can use. Sometimes we think that oh, everything after is fled. No, don't have that misrepresentation. He said, I am the only one left. 
I have been jealous for the Lord. And in 19 chapter 5 and 7, no, we read when he was you know, sleeping under the tree, under the broom tree, we, we see angel of the Lord came and touched him. That word, I have highlighted that word because it was not simply a pat. No, you simply read that verse that is there in chapter 19, verse 5 and 7, that in the two verses, it is specifically mentioned, the angel of the Lord came and touched him. No, it is a touch of the Lord. Now, when we say, now sometimes we testify, yesterday I had a touch of the Lord, or I got the Lord touched me yesterday. No, we say, when we say, the Lord touched me, what do we mean? It's something that quickeneth us. It is something that re revive us. It is something that brings us to our sins. It is something that the dead vessels of our spiritual life is awakened. If we mean that by the touch of the Lord, here it is written, even when the angel of the Lord touched him for two times, nothing could revamp him. He was such a disappointed person. Even the touch of the Lord even God himself came to touch him. He could not come back to his sense. That kind of a situation he went through. What was the third problem that Elijah couldn't hear the voice of God in the difficult time of his discouragement and disappointment? Number three, he expected God to speak the way he thought. Now we all have an expectation. No, as I said, we expect God to speak within our frame. Now that is what when we read in chapter 19 verse uh, chapter 19 verse 9 following, now when God appeared to him in the Mount Horeb, God appeared him in the whirlwind, God appeared him in earthquake, God appeared him in fire, but in, in three natural phenomena, in natural calamity, God was not there. Because his expectation is that if God represents, if God the, the theophany happens, it should happen in this way. We all have expectations about our God. Now sometimes we expect God to speak within our frame. You just remember the title I mentioned. God is willing to speak in gentle whisper. What was his expectation? His expectation God speaking in a whirlwind. His expectation was God speaking in fire. His expectation was you no know, something that is superior to Carmel. His expectation was God should come in this form, in this way, in this manner. But what was God's plan? God's plan was to speak to him in a gentle whisper. His heart was full of commotion. His heart was with full of discouragement and his mind was with a full of turbulent voice and his, his mind was just like a volcanic eruption. He was so disappointed. Therefore, that gentle whisper didn't enter into his ears. We expect God to speak within our frame. Friends, dear brothers and sisters, if we simply take our frame out and allow the Lord, simply wait. If God can guide you to guide you to Cherith, if God can guide you to Sarifat, if God can bring you back to the palace of Ahab, if God can make you to stand on Mount Carmel, he, of course, had a hiding place for you. He had a provision for you. He had something kept in store for you. What was the problem? He expected the voice of God the way he thought. But God's plan was to speak to him in a gentle whisper. Many times, our troubled heart, our troubled heart, there is a lot of voice in our heart. There is a lot of voice in our mind. Our life is with a lot of voices. 
the voices that coming from hundred directions the voices that comes from the situation the voices that comes from the enemy the voices that comes from our concern the voices that come from our anxiety calm them down then we will be able to hear that gentle whisper that gentle whisper enemy is trying to make your life with a lot of voice that can discourage you and sometimes we have our story we have our expectation we want bring the conclusion the story of god to our directions no that's not possible god said no 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 you cannot bring the story to your desired end if i have called you if i have appointed you if i have you give you a message if i have sent you if i have protected you if i provided everything you your life was secured under my direction and under my hands so far i am able to take you to the next level if god can bring you this far is he not able to take you the next level yeah, of course he is but what is the problem he was not willing he didn't wait for the lord not even a second immediately after listening the threat from jezebel he ran to judea he ran to bersheba not only he ran to bersheba he just slept under the tree and said lord i want to die i want to die what a disappointing story so let's move on now god is what we understood about him of course true we have an understanding of god what is revealed to us about god is true what you understood about him in the scripture is true but you should also understand god has something beyond our comprehension that's a place where we feel of course our understanding of god from the scripture is true you have experienced him you have understood him but don't try to limit him there he is beyond our comprehension allow him to speak elijah didn't allow god to speak no you give a space for him let god have a space he is the master who has the right to alter who has the right to make any twist in your life he has a right if you give space to him if you give the freedom to the master lord i thought this is what my life would be lord i thought this would be the size of my life this would be the end of my life but if the master want to alter your life who are you to ask the master let my life be like this only no if he called you if he provided you if you gave he he gave you the vision he also has the right to alter his plans his purpose concerning your life there elijah went wrong so he thought he is the master he is the master no you are the prophet you are the anointed one you are good for him you are great for him everything is right but you are not the master you are only a servant if we have that attitude lord i am only a servant i am not the master of my life i am not the master of my life of course i have a call of god i am anointed i am working for you but when i am considering all these things still i should be submissive as a servant willing to listen elijah was not willing to listen no he had a god had a plot a twist that is beyond our apprehension of course we have anxieties no doubt but god is able to understand all our apprehensions no don't be obstinate to supplement it with your design that was a problem with elijah he had his design in his mind and god was trying to alter it god was change was changing the plot god was changing the you know, bringing the twist he was not willing to accept the twist 
let me come to the come to our current situation that we go through we all are going through a twist we never expected i am now 52 in all through my life i never heard a situation like this i never thought and now i never had a plans if these things happens if such situation arise now we all have anticipation we all have plans we all have no, no options number one number two number three if the if the first first option didn't work i will go for the second option if the second option didn't work then i will go the, the, the get, go for the third option but in our options we never had such a situation in our life we never thought our life will be locked inside the house we never thought that pastor benny will speak from mumbai online through to people in california we never thought that we will be conducting our worship service for six months for one year and online we never thought we never thought but god bring the twist but when god is bringing the twist god also has a provision just to understand what is after this only one thing don't get discouraged don't give up don't get panic simply quieten all other voice of anxieties simply ask the lord lord what should i do what is your plan for my life after this my education is disturbed. My job is disturbed. My family is disturbed. My income is disturbed. Everything is disturbed. Yes, our life is taking an unexpected turn. But immediately after this crisis, we will see how beautifully God has designed our future. If only we are willing to listen that gentle whisper, that gentle whisper, to listen that gentle whisper, we need to make a lot of changes in our life. Our life is with a full of voices and commotions and eruptions, volcanic like situations, anxieties, apprehensions. We are fully troubled. In this troubled situation, if you expect to listen, nothing can be heard. But what we have to do, simply, simply, simply come and stand before the Lord. That is what in chapter 19, verse 9 to 13, it is written. God asked Elijah, come and stand before me. Come and stand before me. You know, he could have done it there in the Carmel, but he didn't do it. No, when God met him, let's move on. No, when God met him, no, why he went to Horeb? No, you see, no, when, when God met him in, in, in the wilderness of Beersheba, what was God's demand? What God commanded him? Race. You have a long way to go. Elijah, if he was obedient to the Lord, he would have gone to the place and stand before the Lord as earlier and he would have sought the grace of God and the counsel of God. Instead of seeking the counsel of God, he went further down. No, I know. No, Samaria is on the north. And uh, just I will show you the map. You see, here is the map. You see Galilee here on the middle. And there you see the Mount Carmel. I don't know whether you are able to see it clearly. You see Samaria, then you see Galilee. In the Samaria, you have the Mount Carmel. He was standing there. From there, he just came down all the way to south. Now you see Beersheba on the south end. No, when we come to Beersheba, no, there he was supposed to go back to north. But instead of going to north, what he did, he went further. No, you see, 
further down to Mount Hori. If you can see my cursor, I think it's see Mount Carmel here near to the Great Sea. It's written, Great Sea is written. Now you see Mount Carmel is just facing the Great Sea there. From there, he came to Beersheba here. If you can see my cursor. And then from instead of going to north to Damascus, where he was supposed to continue his ministry by anointing certain people to give his baton over to somebody else. What he did, he went down, 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 further south into Mount Oreb. No, instead of traveling to God's direction, no, he was, no, you see, from Mount Carmel, he came to Beersheba. And when God asked him to go back, you have a long journey. That is all what mentioned. He didn't say the direction. He didn't say the place. He didn't say him to go to Horeb. He didn't say to him to go and wait for me in Mount Zanai. No, God didn't say, said all these things. He himself decided further south, further south, down again to, he went to Horeb. There also, he was not waiting on the Lord. He hid himself in a cave. God came and asked the Lord, Elijah, now is the time. You stand before me. You just try to listen what, what I have to communicate to you. Try to listen. What was the problem? He was not willing to listen. He was not willing to let his ears open to the law, voice of the Lord. He was always running, running, running away and away and away. Now God came and commanded him, stand before me, stand before him. I'm going to pass by. I'm going to pass by. I'm going to speak to you. I want to communicate to you. God came and visited him on the Mount Oreb or Mount Sinai. God said him, no, God said, I'm going to pass by. So he was a little bit anxious. Yes, God is going to pass by. No, his expectation, already I said, he had an expectation of theophany. This is the way God appeared. This is the way God appeared. This is the way God speaks. He had an expectation. So according to his expectation, God appeared. What was, there was a whirlwind. There was an earthquake. There was a fire. So he was eagerly waiting. Yes, God is going to, going to speak to me. God is going to speak to me. But God was not there in the whirlwind. God was not there in the earthquake. God was not there in the fire. Then God said to him, come out from your cave. Then he heard a gentle voice. A gentle voice. Friends, let me come to the conclusion. What is God's answer for your life? When you are disappointed, when you are not seeking the face and grace of God, when you are so disappointed, when God is turning things to unpleasant twist, when God is bringing the story to his desired plot, which he never thought, which we and you never thought, what is the answer? Simply, it is written in chapter 19, verse 11. Stop running. Stand before me. Stand before me. Dear brothers and sisters, dear church, this is my message for you. These days, simply allow, allow God to speak. God has a provision. If things are taking unpleasant twists and turns. If things are coming to unpleasant conclusions, we should ask, Lord, what is next? What is next? My future is in dark. My life is in dark. My life is in uncertainty. I have a threat all around my life. What should I do? What should I do? Stand before the Lord. Stand before the Lord. Allow me to speak. 
listen to me that was god said to elijah after carmel he expected a great theophany and a sudden judgment that was his expectation what was his expectation after killing all the prophets of baal after killing all the prophets of ashera he was expecting a, a sudden judgment on jezebel but that didn't happen that didn't happen so he was disappointed he answered in a gentle whisper what was that he whispered no his turbulent mind did not listen that small voice let me tell you maybe god was always speaking to him god was speaking there even in carmel itself god was speaking while he was running god was speaking while he was sleeping god was sleeping when he was disappointed god was speaking but problem was he was not listening problem is that god's voice was so gentle so gentle many times when we are running with our turbulent mind with our windy thoughts lot of things in our mind we are missing that gentle voice that gentle voice is telling my son my daughter if i have called you if i am bringing things to unpleasant situation if things are taking unexpected turn and twist i have an answer also for you god never brings things to a sad end without an answer god will not take our life to such a situation without his answers ready yes god had a beautiful plan about elijah god had a beautiful plan about elijah i know all those who are listening to my message you are sure you know, you know I, i i know for sure you know the story of elijah how this life entered what was the conclusion how his life entered it was in a beautiful way he did not die as a disappointed person he did not end as he expected in bersheba he did not die a die death of a sinful person he did not like die like jezebel he did not die like aha he did not like any other person in israel he did not like like one of the prophets jezebel said you will be dying like one of the prophet but elijah did not die like one of the prophet he was transformed he was taken up to the heaven in in the heaven in the fiery chariots that was his plan a beautiful plan a beautiful program a beautiful end not a sad end not a drastic end not a tragedy rather that was a beautiful end god was willing to communicate that beautiful story to him but only problem was this time that was a gentle whisper this time that was a gentle whisper we know god speaking in many different ways we know we we have heard god spoken to us in different ways but don't limit him only to that frame god has a different way to communicate to you god is speaking a different language to us god is speaking something new to us to this generation to each one of us in a different way god has something to communicate to us through this pandemic god has a special message for his people through this pandemic are we willing to listen that church should not speak like the world believers should not speak like the world god is speaking something else to the world god is communicating something to the world 
God is bringing things maybe of the different color of the different manner to the world but his communication to his redeemed people is not the same message that he is passing to the world he has a special message for you and for me if only we are willing to listen we will hear that these days my prayer my expectation my waiting lord let me let me let me hear that which you want communicate to me let me come to the conclusion calm your mind cool down let commotion settle down there is an answer do that say no do what i say that is the message to elijah your life your job is done no i have 7000 left with me let me continue my job let me take things further don't expect you to conclude everything as you dream i am the master let me continue the play let me continue the plot let me continue the drama let me continue the history let me continue that is what god was trying to communicate to him but he was not willing to listen dear friends let me conclude it here i don't know how far i made make sense to you through this message yes sometimes when things are taking unexpected twist and turns we get disappointed we forget everything elijah forgot everything how he was kept in chariot he forgot how he was kept in sarepath he forgot how god led him even make him to stand on the carmel he forgot everything when something happens in our life we forget everything the past experience the beautiful day how god led us the beautiful way how god provided we forget everything and then we try grumbling murmuring complaining i want to die no 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 yes friends things are turning bad, from bad to worse true but but god has something beautiful to speak stand before me listen to that that has a beautiful future how god is going to take you where god is going to take you no in that story he said what you expected is a judgment yes i will do that i will judge ahab i will judge jezebel i will do i will do your expectation that god's name should be glorified in israel all the bal prophets and everyone who worship bal should be punished yes i will do that but i will do that threefold you are doing alone but i am going to do it threefold who are the threefold i will do it through hazael i will do it through jehu i will do through elisha if you are going to conclude the story you will be concluding the judgment alone but if i am going to conclude the story i am going to conclude the story with the threefold punishment on the people of israel which is better which is better elijah concluding the story or god concluding the story if elijah elijah is bringing the judgment he can bring judgment only as a person alone but god said if i'm going to bring the judgment on the people i will bring it threefold hazael a cruel man a merciless man he will punish israel jehu a man who is a mad charioteer he will punish people of israel and everyone who is left the sword of elisha jehu will kill everyone who is left the sword of jehu hasael will kill dear brothers and sisters sometimes we think we try to write the end of the story but god said let me write the story let me bring the story to conclusion allow me i am the master i have the right to alter everything as i expected if we are willing to listen to him there is a gentle whisper may the lord richly bless one and all through this message 
Thank you for inviting me to share God's word. May the Lord richly bless all of you. And uh, I request all of you to pray for me. And I assure that definitely I will remember all of you in my prayer. May the Lord richly bless one and all to receive and listen that gentle voice of God with the answer for your life. God bless you. Thank you.